Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in our transition to hybrid learning orientation. So we are taking a new venture together as a staff as we get ready for our return, well, not return, our start to hybrid learning. Um, again, my name is Dr. Monell. I am the extremely proud principal of William Rainey Harper School here in Cleveland, Ohio, where our mission is to ignite, build, and encourage. We'll begin shortly. Again, please put your um, device on mute. And this presentation is being recorded for our families that are just joining us. So welcome back. <laughs> it's been a crazy year. If you can imagine, you know, March 13th, our babies were ripped away from us and we were told that we were not be returning to school for at that time what was only supposed to be three weeks and cut to almost 365 days later. So we are looking to talk about our entering into hybrid learning. So welcome back scholars and families. This information is going to highlight safety protocols and procedures expected for hybrid learning. So again, please mute your microphones. Um, the meeting is being recorded. If you have any questions during the presentation, please place those in the chat. We will not be having our families take themselves off of mute. If you have a question, please place those in the chat. Um, we will have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. And if you are calling in, I know a lot of our families mentioned that they would be calling in. You can also email your questions to questionswrh at gmail.com and we will respond within 48 hours. Again, that's questionswrh at gmail.com. So what I wanna share during this presentation, I will be giving you all of the information that I have. I do not have all of the answers, but I do have some answers. So again, please put your questions in the chat. So I will do my best to get a response if I cannot answer it in the moment. Our goal at Harper is to make the return to school as safe and as smooth as possible. But a lot of things that are going to be talked about in this presentation will be will be sharing how school is going to be different. We have to realize that school is going to be different than what it was um, back before March 13th, 2020. So our priorities is to maintain the health, safety, and well-being of our scholars and staff. Um, we will be doing our best to make sure that when you go off to work or do what you need to do, you know that your scholars and your babies are safe in our building. We'll exemplify excellence in learning and teaching, which we've always been doing prior to COVID and during COVID. Harper has never dropped the ball and we will continue to do great work. We'll support our scholars, staff and families as they adapt to the new methods of learning and teaching. Things will change. And we're gonna ensure efficiency across organization to encourage flexibility and financial help. Um, I wanna make sure that you are all aware if you go to our website, an all school websites, um, Cleveland has shared information about safety protocols, health protocols. So all you have to go to do is go to clevelandmetroschools.org backslash hybrid, or you can go to our school website and the district has manually put it on there for all schools. So this right here is something that I wanted to spend a few minutes going over just so all of our families are clear. Families should have received a letter in the mail from the district. On the letter, it will have told you what days your child was assigned hybrid. Every scholar in CMSD was assigned a hybrid schedule. That means your child would either come to school on Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday. All scholars were divided based on last name by the district. Schools had no say in how that all happened, we will provide the list as you were. Hybrid learning is gonna be in-person and remote. Remote is currently what has been happening. So your child will be coming to Harper two days a week and they'll be staying remote two days a week. That is the hybrid option. Every scholar has been enrolled into hybrid learning. The only scholars that have not are pre-K, and certain special needs classrooms, and those would be our MD and our ED classrooms. Other than that, all scholars have two days on, two days remote. If you choose to not do hybrid, that is where you need to contact the district. If you are okay with hybrid, there's nothing that you need to do. 
if you want to then change to remote where your child would stay home all four days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, you would have to contact the district and that information will be placed in the chat as well. And then you would let them know that you have changed your mind. So again, if you are hybrid and you are okay with that, you are good to go. If you would like to change to remote, you would need to contact the district and make that known. You cannot tell us that has to go through the district. They approve those. One thing about hybrid, if you need transportation, please, 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 please make sure you give them a call and assure that that has been set up. And that number will be provided later on in a slide. So contact transportation just to make sure. It is very important that your child only, only attends on their assigned days. If they're assigned Monday and Tuesday, they do not need to show up on Thursday and Friday. They will not be able to attend class. I will not be asking teachers to cover kids who show up on the wrong day. They will be placed in a waiting room and we will be contacting you and you will need to come and pick up your child, your daughter, your son, your niece, your nephew, your grandson, your granddaughter, whoever it is. They will not be permitted to go to class. So please let us continue to work together as a team to make everything as smooth as possible, only drop them off on their assigned days. They will not be going to class on days that they are not assigned. So please do not, do not drop them off on days that they are not assigned. Finally, for any family that is interested in the virtual academy, I want you to, to make you aware that is a choice for you know, scholars who are a little bit more independent and they can handle that online learning and being flexible without the, the help or assistance of a lot of adults. If you choose the virtual academy, you will lose your spot at Harper. So if you stay remote, you are still a Harper scholar and you stay on our roster. If you choose virtual academy, it is essentially attending a different school. You will be taken off of the Harper roster and you will be placed on the virtual academy roster. If your goal is to then return to Harper in the fall, you would have to go through the portal and you would be placed back on the waiting list if that grade level has a waiting list. So I wanna make sure everyone is aware that the virtual academy is a pretty permanent decision. You will lose your spot at Harper. I just wanna make sure that is clear as well. When it comes to hybrid and remote, Harper, we are doing our absolute best to ensure that our scholars are being taught by our teachers, but we cannot 100% guarantee that for our remote kids. We are working really hard. Um, staff will be getting information this week to make families more aware if that is going to be a possibility or not, but we cannot 100% guarantee that our 100% remote scholars will be taught by a Harper um, teacher. They could be taught by someone else in the district. It will be a certified teacher, but it will be a teacher from another school possibly. How that all makes sense, and we are clear on hybrid, remote, and the virtual academy. So here is the information that if you want to opt out, so if, like I said, every scholar has been assigned a hybrid schedule. If you want to opt out and you want to stay remote or attend the virtual academy, the number is 216-838-3675. And you have until March 19th to opt out. After March 19th, your child's schedule is permanent. If after March 19th, you realize, hey, I really don't like the remote thing, or I don't like the virtual academy, I wanna change my mind and come back to Harper, you will not be able to do that. That is out of our control. We cannot re-enroll kids or take kids back. After March 19th, your decision is permanent. So please, please, please make sure you are comfortable with your decision by March 19th. The link to um, change or opt out will be shared in the chat as well um, at the end of this presentation. So for all of our families who have selected to stay with us and to continue or try this hybrid learning model, there's gonna be some phases. So I wanna go through this as clearly as I can so everyone is aware. Phase one begins the week of March 8th, which is this week. Our special needs, self-contained special education um, population 
they will be returning to classrooms this week. They start on Friday. So to our MD scholars and our ED scholars, they will return this week and their first day is Friday. To our pre-K, kindergarten, first grade and second grade scholars, your hybrid learning schedule begins the week of March 15th. So your first day will be next week. So this week is just for our MD and ED scholars, March 15th is for our pre-K students and students in kindergarten through second grade. And then phase three will begin on March 22nd. And that'll be for the rest of our scholars, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. Families, please be aware that when we start our hybrid model, the time for classes will change. We will be adhering to our in-house building time of eight to 2.30. So all that information will be shared with families in more detail, but I just wanted to make sure that we are, you are aware of that as well. This is just a slide of important context if anything comes up. If you wanna take a screenshot or take a picture of this, again, you can email questions, wrh at gmail.com. My name is Dr. Manel, I'm the principal. I will do my best to make sure you have all the information that you need. Um, that's our office phone numbers. Any questions for our psychologist, that's Ms. Megan Getty. Our, our IB coordinator is Ms. Rachel Greg Scott. Our CS Family Support Specialist is Ms. Kenzie Hanlon. She's also provided her cell phone number and her email. Any special edu ed education questions, um, our liaison for the building is Thomas Vareshby. You can also, or you, sh you should also reach out to that child's intervention specialist first. So for pre-K, that is Ms. Wellman. For K to two, that is Ms. Braun. And for three to five, that is Ms. Conrad. So if you have a special education question, please reach out to your child's special education teacher. For MD, that is Ms. Barbary. For ED, K to two, that is Mr. Kuhn. And for ED, three to five, that is also Mr. Vareshvi. And our building testing coordinator is Ms. Jennifer Braun. These are other important information or sorry, context. If you need to contact anyone about IT support with devices, um, COVID hotline, rapid response, all of this will be provided and shared again on our website. It is very important that you update your contact information. All of the things that we're gonna be sending out through IVRs, through emails, we need to have your accurate contact information. So please, please, please contact our front office and make sure that your phone number is correct, your email is correct, your address is correct. Even if you are 99% sure that it is all correct, it just takes two minutes to give us a call, double check and make sure that your information is correct in the system. Um, like I mentioned, our school hours are 8 a.m. to 2.30, which has been what our school hours have been prior. Um, visitors are not allowed into, into the building, so you would need to call and make a, um, arrangements prior. You will have to complete the COVID health screening and you'll be made to wait in our front area. Um, you will not be able to walk through the building. All visitors must wear a, a face mask. If you don't have a mask, one will be provided. Um, and again, you will not be permitted to walk into the classrooms. Um, what I want to share with our families on the call with us and those viewing this later for the recording is the plan for um, entrance. Right now, because of um, COVID protocols, we have to have each child come into the building one at a time. So that is going to make our arrival process take a little bit longer than normal. Um, Officer Perkins has procedures he has to follow. Scholars have to line up six feet apart outside. We'll be setting up cones or markers that are six feet apart and scholars will stand by their individual cone. Even if there are siblings and they're coming from the same household, they will still need to be standing by an individual cone. Our bus riders typically arrive at 7.30. We'll be welcoming our bus riders into the building at between 7.30 and 7.50. We are asking our car riders if you can please come as close to eight o'clock as possible. We'll then be allowing our car riders to join the line between 7.50, uh, well after 7.50 and we'll be getting them in. Our pre-K scholars, we're asking that you, um, you can give us some time and you start your arrival process between 8.10 and 8.15. I know that's a delay for some families, but again, we wanna make this as safe as possible. We're trying our best to also keep in mind that we don't want our pre-K our pre-K scholars to be lining up outside with our older scholars. This is a new environment for them and we don't want them to be too nervous. 
Um, so that's why we're delaying our pre-K entrance so that by that time, we would have gotten all of our bigger kids into the building and into class. And then we can have our pre-K do their arrival individually. So our new baby scholars, you know, can be excited and not too nervous. So again, please adhere to our um, arrival times and that'll be shared in post and our website as well. I am reiterating this and stressing this that for the safety of everyone, parents, guardians, visitors, volunteers are not allowed inside the building or classrooms during the school day, um, except for scheduled appointments or meal pickup. And those scheduled appointments are going to be, have to be very specific and they'll have to be approved by the front office team. So I would have to be made aware of that and to sign off on that. So again, please do not expect to visit classrooms or I just wanna go down and see the teacher. I wanna see what the classroom looks like. We will not be doing that this year. Um, because the goal is to keep everyone safe. Um, I've already went over arrival and dismissal times. I mentioned our process about scholars being lined up social dis socially distanced with cones. Um, they will get their um, temperatures checked. Um, after arrival, scholars will walk through the front door and they will walk down to the arena and they will sit in the arena and they'll be monitored by staff. And then teachers will then come and pick up the scholars from the arena and walk them to their classrooms. Bus riders will be dismissed from their classrooms. I know last year was a little different. We would have our scholars wait in one room and then we'll go out one at a time. That is not gonna happen. Bus riders will stay in the classroom. We will make the announcements over the PA when the bus arrives and they will all be monitored by staff and they will walk one by one, socially distanced and they'll walk out to their bus. Car riders will be dismissed through the cafe doors when you pull up in your cars, we are asking that you please stay in your vehicle. Harper will be providing laminated, I wish I had a fancy name, I forgot what they're actually called, but we'll be providing you something where you uh, can write your child's name um, or the child you're picking up their name in grade level. We'll, we'll pre-populate the grade level. You would put that in the car window and our staff will then call for that child. You do not need to get out. You don't need to wait by the fence. No one is allowed to wait by the door. You cannot come past the black fence. So we're asking that you please stay in your vehicle and we will escort your child out to the car. For our walkers, they will also be dismissed by the cafe doors. For family members to come and pick up the walkers, we will have cones set up and marked for our walkers where you stand by a cone that'll be six feet apart and then you wait for your child um, or scholar to be released. So again, we're not having you walk up to the fence. We're not having you walk up to the door. We'll be releasing our scholars one by one. Getting ready for school. Parents, caregivers will check their child's temperature um, and their health at home. Please, in order to keep us all safe, students should stay home if they have any of the following symptoms. If there's a fever of 100.4, if they're coughing, they have a headache, the, there's a new loss of taste or smell, they have a sore throat, congestion or runny nose, fatigue, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea, muscle or body aches. Please, 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 please keep them home just so they are safe, our scholars are safe, our staff is safe. So please check your child's health in the morning. Students will wear their um, clean cloth mask covering from the school and they'll wear it throughout the day. We'll be providing cloth face masks for all students and face shields for pre-K, kindergarten, and some special education scholars. If you are sending your child with the face mask, we appreciate that. Know that it would need to be school appropriate. We don't want any symbols or sayings or markings on it. And if it is deemed inappropriate by myself or a team member, we will provide them a face mask. Um, they'll just have to take it off, put that face mask in their book bag, and they'll wear the one that we are providing. But we do have face masks in the buildings to provide the building to provide for all of our scholars. Students grade um, first uh, through 12 will be provided a computer backpack and should bring their fully charged device every day. Please do not bring personal devices. We are not asking you to bring a personal device, a personal cell phone, a personal iPad, any of those things. We are not responsible for those and scholars will not be allowed to use them in the building. If anything happens, they are lost, stolen or broken. Harper will not be responsible. CMSD will not be responsible. Scholars will be provided a device. Do not bring personal devices. If your scholar needs a provided device, please contact our family support specialist, Ms. Hanlon, and she will support you in making sure that everyone has a device. 
Uniforms are not required. Um, CEO Eric Gordon already pushed that information out. However, students must wear school appropriate clothing. Um, and again, if we deem it inappropriate, we'll be giving you a call. So please make sure they have sleeves on. I'll go into more details on the next slide. Um, but one idea that we had to make it simple, Mondays, you know, in normal times, on Mondays, all of our scholars wore their Harper Polo. Not because of the split schedule. On Monday, our scholars could just wear their Harper Polo. And then on Tuesday, they can wear a Harper T-shirt. And then for our Thursday, Friday kids, they can wear their Harper Polo on T-shirt uh, on Thursday and a Harper T-shirt on Friday. Makes it very simple. Everybody's in appropriate school attire and we won't have to worry about any issues. Um, to our new families, we always provide a Harper Polo the first one free of charge. So if you need a Harper Polo, let us know and you get the first one free of charge. If you would like to purchase one, our Harper Polos are $12 and our Harper t-shirts are $10. So again, uniform is not required, but we are asking that our scholars are dressed appropriately. College shirts, t-shirts with sleeves, um, appropriate length shorts and skirts, no pajamas, absolutely no pajamas, absolutely no hoodies and no open toe shoes. There's no exceptions with those, no pajamas, no hoodies, no open toed shoes. If you are going to send your child in jeans, again, we would prefer that they keep the khakis. You know, we, our colors are um, khakis. You can have khaki, black, gray, or blue. We would prefer that they just wear, wear those. But if you send them in jeans, they can't have holes. They can't have tears. They don't need to have excessive designs. Um, we, we, we are coming back to school and we want our scholars to be in that mindset. Hybrid learning schedule, school, students will be in school two of the four days. Um, most students will attend school two days out of the week. Wednesday will stay an asynchronous day. So what we've been doing with our wonderful Wednesdays, our PPT, um, our virtual reading buddies, that will continue to happen on Wednesday. Only preschool and special education students, specific special populations will be able to attend four days. We cannot change that. So if you have a scholar in kindergarten or second grade or fifth grade, we cannot change your two days a week to four days. So I know some families have been asking teachers or calling and asking me, we cannot change it to four days. Only pre-K and special population scholars can attend four days. Parents, again, you may make that change if you wanna change your days or change um, to um, remote or virtual academy by contacting the school um, choice and enrollment. Here is a quick sample of what a student schedule could look like in the pre-K to eight hybrid world. Um, on Monday and Tuesday, they may have in-person learning with their phys physical teacher in the building. And then one period, they may have to log in to their device and then they'll be taught from an uh, online teacher. That could be teacher A, I'm just gonna pick a grade level. Let's say teacher A, um, Miss Posey is teaching in person for the first three periods and then for Two, two periods in the afternoon, she's doing the online kids. Um, so it'll still be Mr. Ms. Posey or Mr. Morell. Um, but even if kids are coming into the building, they could have some online classes. Those will be taught by a Harper staff member. And again, we are working to see what we can do to make sure that we ensure our remote kids um, have a Harper, scholar, Harper teacher, but we cannot guarantee that right now. Wednesdays will stay the same. CMSC continues to follow recommendations of medical health experts, temperature checkpoints, and hand sanitizing stations are placed all throughout the building. Social distancing defined as six feet between people will be maintained. Capacity in buses and in classrooms is limited. So to ensure fewer students are using the space at the same time and classrooms and other areas of the school and buses will be cleaned and sanitized regularly between use. What can students expect? High quality instruction, that's not gonna change. Um, continuing to use of strong content, curriculum, and methods of delivery, one-to-one -one technology, pre-packaged meals um, to reduce food service lines. So again, lunch and breakfast will be a little different. Our scholars will not be going through the breakfast or through the lunch line and getting to pick what they want. It's going to be all pre-packaged and that'll be delivered. So eating breakfast and lunch in the classroom will avoid large gathering in the cafe. So that's going to be taking place in classrooms. And again, it'll be pre-packaged breakfast and lunch, scholars just take it as they're um, getting ready to go to class and lunch will be delivered to the classroom. Um, monitoring by a school nurse or health aid um, professional. Um, so when a scholar is exhibiting symptoms, um, they'll be placed in what is called a COVID clear clinic and then you will be contacted um, by that healthcare professional. 
um, students should stay home for a full 24 hours after um, the fever or their symptoms subside. So if we have to contact you about symptoms, um, please make sure that they're getting better. And after they get better, wait a full 24 hours for that as well. What families can expect, you know, we will do our best. 100% we're dedicated to make sure that your scholars are safe. So social distancing when they're in school, in the, on the bus, in the classroom, during breakfast, lunch, and at recess and other times in school facilities. I want our families to understand that this is all gonna look different. Recess is gonna be a little different um, than what our kids are used to. We're gonna do our best to make it as fun as possible while still making sure that we are being safe. Um, there's gonna be altered school and bus schedules due to decreased capacity and then the required face covering for students. They have to wear it all day. So once they're in the building, their mask must stay on. I wanna make sure that is very clear um, for our families that masks must be worn all day while they're in the building. You can also expect two-way communication, phone calls, text messages, virtual meetings, and emails. Also, please follow us on any of our social media platforms. Um, we have to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we do a really good job of updating families with those as well. Um, we'll have virtual family engagement activities. Um, our PTO is gonna continue to put on wonderful events virtually. Um, and if you will be doing virtual or phone parent-teacher conferences, again, we're still not doing anything in the building. It'll still be virtual, we just have, we're having our scholars coming two days out of the week, but all of our other events will still be virtual. School supplies and materials. So this is to let you know what Harper is gonna be providing. So Harper will be providing book bags, basic school supplies and device and headphones if needed. So we will be taking care of that for families. Um, the district has sent to schools um, enough book bags for all of our scholars in first through fifth grade. So we will be giving that. We've also ordered some basic supplies, pencils, um, notebooks, paper, because again, our scholars can't share like they used to. So everyone has to have their own individual things. So we're asking that you please, you know, look to maybe purchase a pencil box. I got an example just to show everyone. So if you want to just purchase one of these so that your child can have all of their things in their pencil box, um, again, we cannot share. Um, I know that's gonna be hard if you see your friend and they need a pencil, you just wanna be like, hey, grab this. No, we cannot be passing pencils and passing notebooks and passing those things around. So please make sure they have their individual things. Um, staff members will be sharing a supply list if there's any specific items that um, you'll need to purchase. For example, it was brought to my attention um, last week, you know, we may need protractors and things like that. Uh, we won't be buying those specific um, type of supplies and teachers will make you aware if you need those. Um, for our scholars who are provided a device, you will need to travel to school with those for, um, our, for our first through fifth graders. Also, if you receive the device in the spring, we're asking that you please bring those in. We will be switching it out to, for a newer device. So a lot of our scholars, when this all happened back in March, um, we had a technology handout in um, April and May. Bring those devices back and we'll be switching out and giving you a newer device. So again, please make sure you're bringing your device with you when you come to school. Supporting your scholars hybrid learning. So we need you to help just get them back in the routine. You know, they're going back to school, even though it's just two weeks, we want them to be ready, you know, going to bed on time getting up um, early, getting dressed for school. Again, that's why it's important to have them in you know, appropriate attire. Um, again, per um, CEO Eric Gordon, uniforms are not required, but we are asking that scholars are dressed appropriately. Um, create a schedule with your child and make a commitment to stick with it. A lot of times we've recommended like doing like visual schedules, like you go to bed at this time, or we do homework at this time, we eat breakfast at this time, is gonna help them get back into this routine because for the last year, they've been able to roll out of bed um, and then log into class. Um, and now it's gonna take a lot of more, lot more time getting up, getting dressed, taking showers, brushing your teeth, eating breakfast, getting in the car or getting on the bus. So setting up a routine would be very helpful. Um, discuss that, that schedule and then best times for learning and a space for their learning, especially on the days where they're gonna be remote and using that visual to help our scholars stay on task. Um, supporting your scholar's social and emotional wellness. Um, please watch for behavior changes in your, your child, excessive crying or irritation, excessive worriness you know, or sadness, worrying or sadness, 
unhealthy eating habits, you know, it's it's going to be a big change um, for our scholars to be back. They've been home for a year and some may be nervous, especially our new families that haven't been with us. Um, you've never been in the building. You haven't seen your teachers in person. A lot of our scholars have, they've never met me. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of nerves happening. So please just keep an eye on that so we can make sure we support our scholars as well. Ask how your child is feeling and communicate that they may be feeling, what they're feeling, it may be normal. If they're nervous or scared, they're anxious, that's normal. It's a lot that's been happening. Um, for us as adults, it's been a lot. Imagine for the kids. Um, and reach out to the school support staff if you have, if you need support. Meal distributions, distributions will be prepackaged. And again, they'll be delivered to the classrooms. And um, more information on breakfast and lunch for our remote families will be forthcoming. I have not gotten clarity on if we're going to keep be keeping the same time and how that's all going to work. But for our remote families, we will be providing lunch. I just don't want to share information until I get guidance on what that's going to look like. Here's the information for transportation. If you have any questions about that, I'll place it in the chat as well. Ms. Yvette Cologne is our rep. And her, she can be reached at 216-838-0954. Supports and resources. Again, Ms. Hanlon has been a fantastic support for our scholars um, on families. There is her contact information. We work very closely with Ohio Guidestone for behavioral and, and emotional health supports. So we have that is Ms. Tiffany Jensen and Mackenzie Kane. And then the Hunger Network will continue to distribute um, fruit and vegetables and you know, bread and different things for our families on Mondays and Thursdays now. They have been able to work with us so we can provide that for our Monday, Tuesday scholars fam and families and our Thursday, Friday scholars and families. And that'll happen between two and 3.30. There will be a system set up. There will be tables outside of the, the fence and there'll be cones. Again, we're still following social distance guidelines. So that will all be set up um, for our families. Um, these are the links to all of our social media platforms. Again, we have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and um, our school website, which Ms. Hanlon and Ms. Greg Scott do such an amazing job of keeping up to date. So thank you to the both of them. Truly appreciate their support with that. So please use any of these to find information. Um, our website has everything. So please go to our website and at least once a day, especially during this um, transition back uh, into hybrid, we're going to be keeping our website updated. And then any questions that we cannot answer or you did not get, you did not think of during this meeting, you know, you can send to questionswrh at gmail.com. Again, that's questionswrh at gmail.com. Okay, so that is a lot of information and a little bit of time because I wanted to get through it as best possible because I know a lot of our staff members have other things that they need to do with scholars as well. I will stop sharing my screen and Ms. Hanlon, Ms. Greg Scott or staff members, are there any pressing questions that I can address or share more information um, with our families. Dr. Monell, one of the questions that I saw come up is when will parents who choose to opt out find out who their child's teacher will be? Um, that is a very good question. Unfortunately, right now, there is not a specific date or time that we've been provided. So if you have opted out or you've chosen to stay 100% remote, the district, how do I put this? So you are considered that, those children are considered cohort C. Um, again, we are working our best to see if we can continue to have those scholars work with us. If we cannot get that figured out, they go into a core where the district then is going to staff those scholars. We have no say in who that staff member is and we have no say in the timeline. Um, as soon as we are told, I will push that information out immediately um, on our website, using IVR, just so families are aware. But as of right now, I cannot tell you when you will find out who your child's teacher will be. Another question that came up a few times is we talked a lot about the kids wearing face masks. Will face shields be allowed? Face shields have been placed in the building for scholars in certain grade levels. So our older scholars will be wearing face masks and we do have face shields for our younger scholars and teachers who work in special education and we, they need that um, abilities so their scholars can see their mouths and see their face. So we do have that in the building as well. Another question that came up is um, related to transportation. Do we know if the bus numbers are going to be the same for scholars? No, we have not gotten our bus um, numbers yet. Um, when we get that again, as soon as I get information, um, I will push that out. 
Um, and unfortunately, a lot of my responses today are, um, is pro it might be when I get that information, I'll push that out because we are still waiting for guidance and direction from the district. Um, so we have not gotten all of our bus numbers. Um, when we get that and our scholars are split into what bus they're on, that information will be provided to staff members as well. And they can share that via Class Dojo, we'll share it via IVR, we'll share it via um, Schoology, but we don't have that right now. Great. Another question is, what will the protocol be if there is a student who tests positive in their child's classroom? So as of right now, um, the protocols are all listed on the COVID-19 website by the district. If someone does test positive, this is why all scholars will be remaining in one classroom. Um, that child will be taken to the COVID care clinic and our health professional in the building will make sure that Harper follows all of the state, um, district, and CDC guidelines in whatever needs to be done in informing families and making sure everybody is okay. So that is all we, all, we will be following the district policy. Um, but in me, again, that's why kids will be staying in one room. So our goal is that we are not having an issue where there's possibilities of you being in multiple rooms throughout the day. It'll just be the kids in that room. And should students bring chargers with their devices that they're bringing to and from school to be able to charge them here? Um, yes, um, we're asking that families have the device charged overnight. Um, if you can put the device, the charger in the back, their backpack, that'll be great as well. Um, we'll be working on having some charge, charging cables here as well. But, you know, if their device starts to die, we want to make sure that they can charge it. And then if it starts to die, you don't have to stress. We have loaners here that we'll make sure we give our scholars. We want to make this as smooth as possible. So if they forget their charger, you know, we'll make sure we can provide them a loaner device so they can continue their learning. But if they can bring the charger, that would be great. Great. And one other question that I'm seeing is if a parent has already opted out but would like to change that to hybrid, would they call the same um, number that you provided earlier in the presentation, school choice enrollment? Yes. Um, if you have opted out, you still have time to change your mind. Again, you have until March 19th. Um, we are asking our families, we, we know it's a lot and there's a lot to consider, but we're asking our families to you know, make their choice as soon as possible because that helps us with our planning. Um, and that helps us with getting ready for scholars who are coming back, preparing our rooms, um, but you do have until the 19th. Now, again, if you choose a virtual academy, switching back will not be as easy. You will lose your spot at Harper. I just, I just wanna make sure I reiterate that about the virtual academy. Dr. Monell, what will the protocols be for bathroom use? And are children going to be able to use the restroom as it's needed? So there's gonna be a bathroom schedule for all classes. So there's one class at the bat in the bathroom at a time. The, based on the size of our bathrooms here at Harper, we can only um, allow two scholars in the bathroom at a time. So one stall will not be used. It is gonna be locked and taped off. And then one of the unirals will be um, covered as well. So we only allowed two scholars in the bathroom at a time. Um, the scholars will then need to wash their hands on opposite sides of the sink. The ones in the middle have been shut off as well. And then scholars will then take paper towels. There'll be plenty of that in the bathroom to wipe their hands, throw it in the trash can. So only two scholars in the bathroom at a time. We'll be doing bathroom breaks as a class. And there will be a, a procedure for if a child really needs to go to the bathroom outside of their set bathrooms time, um, that staff member, that teacher in the classroom will contact one of the front office staff members and support members, and we will come to the class and we will escort them to the bathroom. Scholars will not be able to walk to the bathrooms by themselves like in years past. That includes all of our scholars, even in fifth grade. I know we can trust our older scholars to be safe, but scholars will not be allowed to go to the bathrooms by themselves um, during this return or the start of hybrid. Dr. Manel, another question that has come through, are students able to pack their own lunches? Um, scholars are able to pack their own lunches. Um, there, will not be, there will be no sharing, um, but they can pack their lunches if they want to bring um, their lunch and have it in the classroom, they can. Um, please, the, the issue with that is just please be careful of packing anything where someone may be high, highly allergic. That's the issue, like, you know, just be careful, like people have allergies to bananas and peanut butter, but yes, they can pack their own lunches. So 
Those are the only questions um, that I am seeing that have not already been answered in the chat. Um, so Ms. Greg Scott, if there are any others that I missed or did not see, uh, feel free to jump in, but I believe that is it. Dr. Monell, there's just been a lot of questions about the exchanging of, of laptops. Is that everybody? Do they bring them the first day? Um, do you just want to, can you clarify that a little bit for us? Who's exchanging devices and how that's going to work? So all of our scholars, first through fifth, all of our scholars need to be traveling with their devices. So whether you're switching it out or not, everyone needs to bring it. We have a sign out sheet of scholars who got a device in the spring. Those devices we will be switching out because those devices were what Harper owned at the time. The district has, provide, has purchased um, Acer devices for our scholars. So we'll be looking and seeing, oh, this was one of our Harper devices from the spring and we'll swap it out. So all of our scholars need to be traveling back with their device. We'll be looking at our list from the spring and from um, earlier in the fall in August, September, we'll do this again, and we'll be swapping them out. So everyone just bring their device, when you go home, you will have either device that, that is okay and up to date, or if you have one of the older ones, you will be getting a newer one. Dr. Monell, can you clarify about when they get the backpacks for the safety of the devices being transported? Yes, um, backpacks will be given out um, the first day. So our Monday, Tuesday scholars, when they come in on Monday, they'll get their backpacks on Monday. Our Thursday, Friday scholars, when they come on Thursday, they'll get their backpacks. Dr. Rennell, should scholars bring their hotspots as well? My recommendation for families is to just throw that in the book bag. It's not that big. Um, we have never had this many people on our Wi-Fi at the same time. So who knows what's going to happen <laughs> when we start this um, hybrid learning process. So I've been recommending to families, just put in the backpacks just in case um, we need to use it. I am pretty sure the district is going to up the Wi-Fi strength so that we're okay, but it's better to be over-prepared. They may not need it, but I don't think it's gonna be that big of an issue to just throw it in their book bag. So yes, I do recommend bringing a hotspot. Dr. Monell, I saw a few questions about recess. The children wanted to know if they would still have recess and how that would be handled. So children can still have recess, but it's going to be handled very differently. They'll have to be socially distanced. Per the CDC guidelines, if scholars have a mask on outside, um, they have some more flexibility in how they can play. Um, however, if scholars want to go to recess and have a mask break, I do want to make families aware that that is a possibility if they want to have a face mask break that can only happen outside of the building and scholars must remain six feet apart. So yes, scholars will still have recess. It'll just look differently. It will not be kids just running around and jumping all over each other. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, we have to be a little bit more safe. Um, but once they keep their mask on, we can still have recess. There were also a few questions about children with seasonal allergies. They wanted to know how that would be handled if they are constantly congested. <laughs> that is why we have the healthcare clinician, clinician in the building. So if there are allergies, um, you know, some of our kids, we, they have asthma, just make sure we are up to date on those things. And that um, our healthcare clinician, her name is Miss Harris. Um, we found that information yesterday that her name is Miss Harris. Um, she will be able to check. So if it's allergies and there's no temperature, there's no other symptoms, you know, we'll, she'll make sure that everything is okay for that child to return to class. Dr. Monell, I just would like to point out with the recess and many teachers are gonna try to do outside so that the students can remove their masks appropriately with distancing. Parents need to make sure that they, with the changing weather and it's so erratic at this time of year that they do need to have coats and possibly gloves and hats for any outside time because they can't be left inside when their class is going out. Thank you, Ms. Silva. Do we have any other questions in the chat that 
um, were not able to be addressed yet. Dr. Monell, should they bring their laptops on the first day? Yes. Okay. Learning starts day one. Um, a lot of this, a lot of this transition to hybrid is going to be learning the new procedures, learning the new protocols. And I want all of our scholars who are listening to this and families, if you can share this with your children or your um, the scholars who attend Harper, things are going to be different. I want to make it very clear. I know a lot of our scholars love Officer Perkins, and I know you miss him. And there used to be so much like jokes and like hugging and high fiving. That can't happen anymore. And you know, typically I wait by the front door. And I give everybody a high five or a hug or a fist bump. That can't happen. Um, so things are going to change. We're not having scholars, you know, a lot of times when you would see your friend in the cafe, you would run to them and give them a hug. That can't happen. Scholars are going to be walking down the hall one at a time, and they're going to walk into the arena and have a seat while they wait for their teachers. So this is going to be different. So a lot of what's going to happen in these first few days is going to be understanding the new protocols and procedures. So families, scholars, bear with us as we make sure that our scholars understand what is happening. When you enter the classroom, you will have a desk. You have to stay in that desk. You can't just get up and walk to your cubby. You can't just get over and sit next to your friend. You can't go over and give your friend a pencil to let them borrow. All those things are changing. So I know we are excited. I am under this sweater and this shirt. I am so excited. My heart is racing. I miss you guys so much. Um, but I need us all to be aware that things are going to be very different. And we're going to be spending a lot of time going through the new procedures. Harper, we are a dynamic building and we'll get it down really quickly and then things will go smoother. So our arrival, hey Abdiel. <laughs> Our arrival procedure and process um, will get smoother over time, but please bear with us, please. I want you to understand myself, the front office team, the staff, everyone at Harper, they are doing all that they can. Um, our custodial team has been working tremendously hard to prepare the building. Our front, Ms. Ms. Curry has been working tremendously hard, manning calls and responding to emails and helping families. Officer Perkins has been working so hard. We have all been working so hard to make sure that this return is as smooth as possible. That does not mean there will not be bumps. That does not mean it may take us longer to get our kids into the building than we anticipate. We have not done this before. So we need you all to understand and be patient with us if it takes a little longer until we get this system rolling. So patience is going to be a virtue during this time. Dr. Monia. Yeah. If you can put the questions in the chat for me, please, 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 because I just want to make sure we just have questions placed in the chat. If you have a separate question that you don't want to put in the chat, you can definitely contact the school after and I will address calls as they come. But please, please, please put your questions in the chat for us. Dr. Monell, can you talk about Disney for a second? Yes. Um, so for our Disney scholars, um, practice will continue to be virtual. I know a lot of families would, were wondering if we'd be able to do it in person and you know do it so socially distance. We can't because even though we're coming back to school, our play will still be virtual. So our Disney play will still be virtual this year and we're gonna continue virtual practice. We will be adjusting practice time because we do have to take into consideration that typically when we would have practice in the afternoon, kids will now be or scholars will not be on the bus or getting picked up to go home. So we will be adjusting practice time, but practice will still be virtual and the play will still be virtual. And we want to thank all of our scholars and all of our families who have been with us during this Disney um, ride. Hasn't been easy, but we're going to make an amazing show happen. There, um, any staff members see any other questions that I can address in the chat? I'm not seeing any additional questions. What I will do in the chat, I will put the um, email address there. If there is a question that we did not see or have not addressed where you can email that question to. So it's questionswrh at gmail.com. And I am putting that in the chat right now. Thank you very much, Ms. Hanlon. And families, I want you to be aware as we continue to prepare 
for this um, transition to hybrid. Between today, tomorrow, just the rest of the week, we're gonna be, as soon as I get information from the district, I'm gonna be pushing it out. So if you do not follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, please do so. If you do not check our school website, please do so. Um, staff members will be sharing information on Class Dojo as well. So please check that. Um, we're gonna do our best to make this, again, the best, best, best return to school as possible. So thank you all so much for sticking with us. It has been a very interesting ride since March 13th, but I will tell our families the same thing that I told the staff. On March 13th, we went into emergency learning and Harper rocked it. Um, we did an amazing job over in the spring with our Harper scholars teaching lessons to families across the states and the country, um, our virtual schedule. We came back in the fall and we stayed remote and we rocked it. And now that we're getting ready for hybrid, we're gonna rock this as well. So thank you so much. It truly means a lot to me that you hung in there with us during this time and that you are, have been patient and understanding as we do our best to continue to make Harper a magical place. Because like, like our scholars say, and I don't, know if, I don't know if she's on the call, but here at Harper, we do things differently. <laughs> we're gonna continue to do our best to make this the best school here in Cleveland and across the country. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much, families, from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of the entire staff. Thank you, thank you, and we wish you a terrific, tremendous Tuesday.